All right, let's go to the back side as click as quick clickly as quickly as possible. Not clickly. Click on something if you need to. But anyway, um, this is a lot like the last few, so I'm gonna go very fast on this one, and this one's gonna be the one that changes things because it's not centered at the origin. So uh, here goes. I'm gonna divide by 400 and then just reduce the fractions. A lot of people are stuck on this, but don't panic. You got this. Uh, 400 divided by 400 is 1. 16 divided by 400 is 1 25th. How in the world do you know that, Mr. Reader? I'm glad you asked. Um, 16 goes into itself once. 16 goes into that 25 times x squared over 25. There's a minus there. 25 goes into itself once. 25 goes into 400 16 times y squared over 16. I kind of swap places there. That does not always happen, by the way. This one's going to open up and down. It has a center at the origin. You know what I'm going to do? I hope this doesn't offend you. Let's just go ahead and do it. The center is at the origin. There are two vertices. The vertices are going to be vertical from one another. So it's going to be 0, 4, and 0, negative 4. I could have done that plus and minus thing. I didn't. All right, my foci... We'll just use two coordinates on this as well. My foci are going to be c squared, a squared, plus b squared. Um, whatever 25 plus 16 is, that is 41, my friends. So c is the square root of 41. That is approximately 6 point something. I don't know what. 6.4. That is actually rounded to two decimal places. It's 6.4t, but, you know, close enough. However, I'm going to call it 0 square root of 41 and 0 minus square root of 41. Got jumbled up in there. Let's draw it. Oh, yeah, one more thing, by the way. y equals plus and minus something x plus 0. I'm going to fill in this number in just a minute. If you're ahead of me and you know what's about to happen, I'll go ahead and tell you what it is. There's your rise. It's 4. There's your run. It's 5. Let's just write it. 4 over 5. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. I told you I'd go fast. I'm going to go up 4, down 4, left 5, and I went right when I said left. 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. Here's your box. This box guides your asymptotes. Your asymptotes guides your per hyperbola. Your hyperbola guides you on the path to success in your mathematical life so you can get a good job and live the American dream. There we go. Enjoy a life of hard work and enjoy the fruit of your labor, all because you study hyperbolas. Here we go. Um, it opens up and down. There it is. There it is. Sure enough, 0, 4, 0, negative 4. See them? Um, does that, it does that, does that one, it does that. We're going to go up and down, square root of 41, it's already figured out for us, it's 6.4-ish. 6 and some change, 6 and some change. Here we go, let's do the next one. The next one has a center that is not at the origin, and that is going to change things just a little. The center is at, I almost said it's at 1, negative 1. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look where the x is. It's at negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1, positive 1. Before I go any further, I'm just going to come over here to my graph, and I'm going to go ahead and put that as my center. Now when I make my box, that'll be the center of my box. Up until now it's been the origin and life has been easy, but not with this one. Vertices. I can't do the plus and minus thing on this one, by the way. Okay. We will go up and down four from the center, not the origin, but from the center of our hyperbola. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Left and right, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. My voice sounds very grovelly right now, doesn't it? I think it does. I have a cold still. Hope you don't catch it by watching this video. You get the sniffles by learning about hyperbolism. Wouldn't that be terrible? What happened to you? Studying hyperbolism. My math teacher was sick. Okay, there we go. There are our asymptotes. It's hard to say. There are our asymptotes. We're going to go there and there. It's from the center. It's not necessarily going to be at the y-axis, okay? It's going to be from the center. So here's one branch of it, and it opens up, and it opens down, because the y is first and positive. Where are the vertices? Well, the vertices are at negative one something and negative one something else. That component is going to be the same for all of them because it's a vertical issue. So the x won't change, the y will. So negative one, one, two, three, four, five. Negative one, five. And negative one, one, two, three, negative three. Where are my foci? Where are my foci at? Don't know. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. 16 plus 36 is 40, 12. That's 52. That's how I do things in my head. Isn't that crazy? Um, C is the square root of 52, which, by the way, is 2 square root of 13, which is approximately 7 point something. Random thought. You know why I know it's 7 point something? Because that's a little bit above 49. Square root of 49 is 7. Just saying. I may not know the decimal, but we can approximate the rest of it. We'll approximate the big part. 7.21. Okay. About 7.21. So we are going to go 7.21 above the center and 7.21 below the center. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a smidgen more runs us off the graph. That's okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a smidgen more. There are our foci. I'm going to simplify things for us just a little bit. One of the foci is at negative 1, 1 plus that amount. 1 plus 2 square root of 13. That's really hard to read. And the other one is at negative 1, 1 minus that amount. 2 square root of 13. You could have treated that as a plus and a minus. Can I take decimals? Sure. This is easier though. Honest it is. Alright, we'll stop there and we'll make a third video out of these last three word problems.